guys, I'm Shimmer and today I'm bringing you a guide on jewelry crafting. We're going to talk about the new traits, how to level it, how to research, all the different passives. Um, there will be time links below so if you want to skip over some parts you can, but let's get to it. Jewelry crafting is the new crafting skill line which allows players to craft their own rings and necklaces and their own set rings and necklaces. Now the set bonuses will work the same as other crafting skill lines. You'll still need to research the same number of appropriate uh, items in order to uh, craft in those appropriate sets. Now only players that have purchased the Somerset expansion will have access to this skill line or be able to craft jewelry. Now anyone, regardless of Somerset purchase, can harvest from the seams, which are the new uh, harvestable node. Uh, or wear jewelry crafted by other players. You just won't be able to refine the raw dust as you can't interact with the tables. Everyone also has the ability to purchase jewelry crafting tables from the master rip vendor, but again, if you don't own Somerset, you won't be able to use it. In order to unlock the skill line, simply find a jewelry crafting table in any major city next to the other crafting stations. Once you interact with it, you will gain the skill line. Looking at the skill line, uh, we see that jewelry crafting will go up to a level of 50, and we have five different passives. The first is engraver, and this will be what uh, you will use to increase the level of item you are crafting and the node that you're harvesting from. Spending one point will allow you to craft level 1 to 25 using pewter, two points 26 to 50 using copper, three points champion a rank 10 to champion rank 60 using silver. Four points will get you champion rank 70 to 140 using electrum. And five points will get you champion rank 150 to 160 using platinum. The more points you invest in engraver will give you access to the higher level harvesting nodes. Uh, the harvesting nodes for jewelry crafting are called seams and uh, are out in the world which give you dust that can be refined into ounces. The next passive is keen eye and this works the same as other professions and makes your seams glow so they're easier for you to see at a range of up to 40 meters depending on how many points you spend in it. Next is Jewelry Extradition. This will increase your chance to receive materials when uh, deconstructing jewelry. So you can spend up to three points in this and I recommend spending all of them. Next is Lapidary Research and this will reduce the amount of time required to research an item. Now it is important to note that unlike other professions, this particular passive does not also grant you the ability to research an additional item. With jewelry crafting, you're only going to be able to research one item at a time maximum. So you'll need to choose either rings or necklaces and um, research that way. But there's no way to, um, to research more than one jewelry item at a time. There are, however, ways that you can reduce the amount of time taken by uh, purchasing uh, research uh, reduction scrolls from either the RIP vendor or the Crown Store. The last passive is Plating's Expertise, and this will reduce the number of platings needed to, or to upgrade a piece of jewelry. Uh, again, you will be able to upgrade your existing jewelry, so if you're wearing some now that you'd like to upgrade, you will be able to do that. Now moving on to traits, there are nine total traits that you can craft jewelry in. The three existing Arcane, Healthy, and Robust, and then six new ones. All jewelry that existed before Somerset cannot be deconstructed. However, it can be researched. So if you have any in your bank that you'd like to research that are arcane, healthy, or robust, you can go ahead and start getting a head start. Now, uh, let's go over the different traits, what they do, uh, what kind of materials they need, and where they drop. First off, we have arcane, which gives you increased magicka. This requires cobalt, which is acquired from refining uh, raw dusts, and this trait can drop all over Tamriel. Next we have healthy, which gives you increased health. This requires antimony, which is acquired from refining raw materials, and again, these jewelry traits can be found all over Tamriel. 
Next we have Robust, which gives you increased stamina. This will require zinc, uh, which is acquired from refining raw dusts, and uh, the, this can drop all over Tamriel as well. Now moving on to the newer traits, we have Infused, which will increase your enchantment effect. And uh, the material needed is Arbic Amber, which is acquired from Sigic Portals, and it, that will drop in its raw form. Um, the jewelry that has this trait on it has the chance to drop from Sigic Portals. Next we have Triune, which gives you increased health, stamina, and magicka. The material required is Dawn Prism, and that is acquired from Jewelry Crafting Research Nodes. You get the ring with the trait on it, and that is awarded from the Somerset main quest line, and you get the necklace from the Sigic Order quest line. The next trait is Protective, and this will increase physical and spell resistance. The material required is Titanium, and that is obtained from daily dungeon rewards in raw form. Uh, the jewelry that drops with this trait, uh, you have the chance to obtain it from Undaunted Chests. Next we have Swift, which gives you increased movement speed. The material required is Gilding Wax, and that is purchased from the Master Rich Merchants for Rit Vouchers. And the jewelry with this trait has a chance, uh, you have a chance to get it when completing normal jewelry crafting Rits. Next is Harmony, which gives you an increased synergy effect. The material required is Debilium, and you get this from the weekly quest trial reward boxes. Um, the jewelry that has this trait on it has a chance to drop from the weekly trial quest reward boxes as well. And lastly we have Bloodthirsty, which increases your damage against low health en enemies. The material required is Slaughterstone, and that is acquired from the War Researcher Vendor in Cyrodiil for Alliance Points. And the jewelry drops um, you have the chance to obtain when completing non-repeatable Cyrodiil daily board quests. These trait materials will drop in their raw pulverized form, and it takes 10 pulverized materials to refine into one that you can use to craft in that trait. Ornate and intricate will still drop, however you cannot craft them. The old drop sets will not drop with the new traits on them. They are only going to drop from the sources I mentioned before. Uh, so if you want one of your existing pieces or um, if you find a new piece and want to put one of the new traits on it, you are going to have to first research it and then transmute it at a transmute station. Now let's talk about upgrading. You gain upgrade materials by uh, either deconstructing a piece of jewelry or refining raw dusts. Now what's different from other professions is that when you're doing this you're going to get what are called grains and the grains come in green, blue, purple, or gold. The green are called tiern, the blue are called iridium, purple is called zircon, and the yellow is called chromium. It takes 10 grain to refine into one plating that can be used to upgrade your uh, piece of jewelry. Now moving on to the jewelry crafting writs. They will be available and uh, in order to unlock those you're first going to have to become certified in jewelry crafting. So you're going to reach level 50 and uh, go talk to this guy High Elf Valerian and he's found in uh, Alinor in Somerset. Uh, he has a small little intro quest for you to do, and once you're certified, you can take uh, jewelry crafting writs from any board in the world. All right, and now it's time to talk about how do we level this. Well, it's going to work just like the other professions. The best way to do this is by deconstructing jewelry. Again, any jewelry that was uh, obtained prior to Somerset will not be available to deconstruct. You're going to have to go out and find new jewelry, uh, unfortunately. Um, I have a friend who actually filled our guild bank with jewelry, and... 
seriously, it's still there. And we're like, dude, get it out of there. But um, anything that existed before Somerset, you cannot deconstruct. So go out, loot stuff, find a bunch of jewelry, and deconstruct it. Of course, um, the ones that give you inspiration bonuses will give you more XP. Also, again, doing uh, like with other professions, when you um, craft a piece of item, if you have a friend that you can trade crafted uh, rings and necklaces to so you guys can deconstruct each other's um, jewelry, that is a great way to do it as well. And that's it guys. Thanks for watching and don't forget to drop a like and a sub if you enjoyed it. And also don't forget you can catch me live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash shimmer with three M's. I do crown pack giveaways over there, base game giveaways, general shenanigans. So if you'd like to get on in on some extra loot, go ahead and drop me a follow there as well. And uh, you guys have a great day and I'll see you in Somerset.